Previously on Kingdom Come Deliverance. Where are you hiding, Ginger? How did you... What the hell are you talking about? Don't try that one on me. I know he's friends with a pair of twins from here. I'm here on the orders of Sir Hanush, and I need to talk to Ginger about the raid on the stud farm. If Sir Hanush sent you, then you should deal with those two cutthroats who've been creeping around here asking about the poor boy. Won't you take care of them? We won't have to hide him anymore. Greetings, my good man. May I ask you a question? Ask first, hey. then I'll ask you something. Really? Good then. We're looking for Ginger, a stable boy at a nearby stud farm. Have you seen him anywhere? The, they're not my mates. They, they nearly killed me. I recognised one of them, so I thought they'd come back and... Recognised? Who was it? Talk! I d don't know his n name, only that he's from Ushets and he has a limp. All I know is one of them is from Ushets. I know enough about him to be able to track him down. All right, but those cutthroats must know who he is too, right? And if they want to get revenge on him or silence him, you'd better hope they don't get to him before you. So drop everything and get on his trail. Find out what he knows and then report back to me. I'm going to our encampment at Merhaya to oversee the security of the region. Yes. Yeah!
Good health to you. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? Must be that farmhand Lubosch. I don't know what the hell you'd want him for, and I don't much care. He's got a cottage on the edge of the village near the stream. I'd like to learn to read. You? Hmm. You don't look like the makings of a priest or clerk. But why not? I've taught all sorts. Bear in mind, it won't be all that easy. You'll need plenty of time and a few groschen for my trouble. All right. I don't want to waste time. We can get started. The sooner I master it, the better. Very well. I will require some groschen from you, though and set aside at least a couple of days so I can put you through your paces, if indeed time is of the essence. Here are your groschen. Then we may as well start. No. He did break his vow, but better than to dishonour it here. May he follow his heart. Wake up, lad. It's time we were getting on. So, let's see you read a bit. There's a book here on the table. Try to read it. Will I manage? You ought to be able to. It's a simple text. Come back once you've worked your way through it. I've read the book. Wonderful. 
So tell me, what have you learned? That being greedy doesn't pay. Excellent. You're one of my most talented pupils. You've uncovered the meaning hidden in the letters. Like I told you, books are valuable. And the words that you place in them ought to be no less so. Does that mean that I can read then? Yes, you have the foundation. Remember, my boy, the pen is mightier than the sword. To fully learn your way around words will take a lot more reading yet. Now we'll move on to the second lesson which will be much harder. Many books are written in Latin, the language of erudite and religious men. If you really want to be able to read, there's no getting away from Latin. There's a book on the table with some text. Read it and then come back. You need not understand it, but you should master the letters. I only just managed the fable about the goose, and now you're asking me to tackle Latin. <laughs> you're a clever lad. You'll manage... I read the page. So tell me, Distrupule, what's written there? Uh, nullus est liber tam malus, uh, ut non uh, liquor parte prosit. Good heavens! Don't tell me you haven't had lessons before. Excellent! Well, there's nothing more I can teach you. Congratulations. You can go and be ordained right away. Thank you, Domine. I'm feeling a lot uh, wiser. Yeah! Move along, citizens. 
Move along. There's nothing to see here. If that's what you call nothing to see, I'd like to know what something to see looks like. By the keys of St. Peter, this is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanish's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof, and I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz, and I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognised someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say you had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you to Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. I'll have to take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Who was Limpy Lubosch? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk. So you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Another thing about... Good God. What happened to your clothes? If you were robbed, you should report it. I've come in the name of Sahanish of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Who was this Lubosch who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhof was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Do you know who Lubosch used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. That's all. Thank you. God bless. Good health to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. 
That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much, but I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I haven't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? Not a clue. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. We didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. How come no one heard anything? What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? That would explain why he didn't scream. Judas. Hmm. Looks like this is meant to be a warning. But for who? And why? Maybe the gang had a falling out. But a bandit who knows how to write isn't something you see every day. Armour? Well, it seems Lubosch wasn't your everyday crofter. And judging by the bloodstains, it looks like he lived the way he died. Nothing unusual. Nothing here. God be with you. Another thing about Lubos. I found armour in his house, covered in blood. God preserve us. Everyone knows he was a violent oaf, but I never thought he'd stoop to murder. At least he never did that here. Farewell. What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? That would explain why he didn't scream.
Ja. Das ist Katsch, wo der Döde ist. The blessings of our good Lord be with you, Father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lyper, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosch? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son. And one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances, and this is one of them. But Lubos is dead. You can't hurt him, but if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told you, I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believed the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians? Worse than the murderer escaping punishment? No one escapes punishment. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhoff raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that? I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening, in the tavern, over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Father. May the Lord watch over you. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this.
Enjoy. Bottoms up. I've only. Over here. I'm sorry, I can't like tell you everything. But maybe we can work something out. But first, I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scalis. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, we'll drink to them. It must have been terrible. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. And we had no warning. They just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Taunberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of the church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujit, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well, congratulations. It's nice to see someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. What actually happened in Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things, but I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claim. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. One beer. I understand, but that means I've reached a dead end. Those cutthroats will strike again, and I can't stop Ale, them. Chin up, lad. I might have a, a solution. What? If I tell you what Lubosch told me, me, I'd be betraying the confessional secret. But... First thing tomorrow, I'll try something I think might help you. Word of honor? On my soul. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where is do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits is in Prague. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. <laughs> Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And, of course, describing them in detail. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them, are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. 
Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church, the lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison, and nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth, and they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people right too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation is completely different. Hooth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sassau Monastery. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be- for debauchery? No, I don't. What do you think of this Jan Hus? He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop condemning drinking and lying with women. Where can I find out more about his teachings? You like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Things that make them angry. And they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundations. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. (laughs) Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected university in Europe. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. One beer for- Enough of this! Bailiff! 
Come on over here. Sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men, throw them out. Oh. You looking for a fight? Henry, back me up. And Henry, too, I'm sure. Right, Henry. Stop that nonsense, Godwin. Are you out of your mind? What will people say? They can say what they like. What do I care? What do they do to me? Watch the step, my dears. Careful, you don't hurt yourself. Godwin, you're a buffoon. Look at this beauty. <sighs> oh. <laughs> we can't do this, can we? Who says? <laughs> Get ringing, wench. <laughs> <laughs> And now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. Godwin, you beast! 
Get up. Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards. Oh, fuck it out. Oh, oh, where the... Oh, what the... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry. My great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, oh Christy Pony, my head. Oh, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive. I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! Oh, you're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. <sighs> then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? No. Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look, from what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishops can have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. Stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this, I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. <sighs> well, all right. Well, I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it, then. Never show up. The swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with him, you beast. Just you wait. 
Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'll throw up. Animals, I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit Panem, in Sanctas, at Venerabiles, a Manus Suas. <clears throat> Hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuhof. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious, curious which one of them will puke first. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> let me go straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. How well was to preach about the church? Just as we are commanded to obey the priests in matters of virtue, so are we commanded to defy them face to face if they live contrary to God's commandments. Hear that, Godwin? It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, cumans, hunger and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver, they show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For shame. Shame upon them. 
It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right. Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates. Away with them. We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin. At least he's a fair and simple man. I say to you in the words of Jan Hus, he who knows much, let him speak much. He who knows little, let him speak little. Let each speak as much as he knows, and he who knows nothing, let him at least teach his neighbour one virtuous deed by setting him good example and refraining from playing dice and from fornication. And that applies both to priests and to you, brothers and sisters. That's his conclusion. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. Have you no shame, you pair of buffoons? I'll be writing to the bishop of this. For shame. Utterly blasphemous. Can you believe such behaviour? For men of the cloth to get drunk at pigs in church. So, is our deal still on? Are you pulling my fucking pizzle? I couldn't have done worse myself if I'd puked on the altar. Well, I'm no preacher. Yeah, I noticed. And I wasn't the only one. You can't be serious. After all that. All what? All you making a complete hash of my sermon? You were supposed to help, not get me into even more trouble. Now I'll have the bishop on my back and all the villagers. Just leave. I need to pull myself together. And what am I supposed to do? Find someone else to help you. God Almighty has something. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Of course. Do you... That man... He was a drunk. Do you know... Not a clue. 
That's all. Good luck then. God be with you. Godwin won't tell me who Lubosch's cronies were. I've reached a complete standstill. Don't even mention that so-called priest. He knocked out one of my teeth yesterday, and you were there with him. I ought to clap you in the stocks. <laughs> I'll go willingly if you stick Godwin next to me. It'd be worth it just to see him suffer. I can well imagine. I've already told you, nobody came here to see him. But now it occurs to me. I did hear he was tried in Rate for some mischief or other. Maybe you can find out something there. The scribe might have made a record of it. Thanks, Bailiff. I never thought of that. And let me give you another piece of advice. Don't go boozing with Godwin again. Good luck to you. <laughs> Fresh bread, bread, rolls, Good day to you. What do you need? Good luck to you.
My respects to you, sir. I need to have a look in the Black Chronicle, Friedrich. And I need blessed relief from my suffering. May the Lord have mercy. Well, I don't know what I can do for you except bring you a priest. I'm not dying yet. I just can't get up. I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm on the trail of those killers from Neuhof, and I need to know the names of the men who were sentenced alongside Limpy Lubosch from Ujitz. I can't remember. Once I write the record down, it goes straight out of my head. It's essential that I find out those names. Is there anything I can do to help you get back to work? I can't go to work when I can't stand on my feet. Konyash the apothecary has an embrocation that helps, but it costs dearly. If you brought me some, it might do the trick. All right, I'll try and get some for you. Good luck to you. Good health to you. Scribe Friedrich needs the embrocation for his joints. What, again? He was here not long ago for some. He ought to make it last longer. I told him not to grease himself up so much. It could cause... Oh, the older he gets, the more foolish he is. Well, did he tell you such salvation is costly? Have a look in the shop for yourself. Take care now. What?
My respects to you, sir. I bought you the embrocation, and you were right, it certainly wasn't cheap. I know, lad. I've been using it for years. Will you let me have a look at the Black Chronicle? Well, you helped me, so now I'll help you. Come along, and I'll show you our Black Chronicle. That really is a miraculous ointment. You haven't even rubbed it on, and it's already working. You know how it is. Faith itself is the greatest healer. Just thinking about the relief it will bring makes me feel better. So don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Come along. God be with you. God be with you. Could you find something for me in that book? The thing is, I don't, um... Don't know how to read, do you? So what do you need to know? I'm trying to track down those Neuhoff cutthroats, and I need to find out the names of any cronies of Limpy Lubosch from Ujits. Hmm. Give me a while. Good luck to you. So did you find any mention of Limpy in the book? I did. Apart from Lubosch, there's mention of some Anton from Vlashim and Hinek, known as Riki, from Ledechko. Ledechko? That's a stone throw from here. Aye. Certainly closer than Vlashim. Thanks for your help. Thank you for that ointment. Farewell. What was that? Fred Bates, just this morning. Right. Fred! Mix it with five drops of altar wine and bury it under the eastern wall of your house. May the Lord reward you. Well, thank you kindly. Good day to you. God be with you. From Scalic, good the Virgin. You all know what happened there. Eh? Help your neighbour.
How are you? Goodbye. God bless. Yeah. Good health to you. I'll see you later. I've got some goods here who... All right. I'll see you later.